Are you ready to dive into the most thrilling and unforgettable courtroom moments? Get ready to be shocked and terrified, and even find yourself laughing as we explore the most dramatic courtrooms ever witnessed. From jaw-dropping confrontations to intense altercations, these stories will keep you on the edge of your seat. George Zimmerman The trial of George Zimmerman for the shooting death of Trayvon Martin was marked by a moment of profound emotion when Trayvon's mother, Sabrina Fulton, took the stand. Her testimony left a lasting impact on everyone present in the courtroom. With heartfelt words and raw emotions, she shared her perspective and memories of her son, Trayvon. Her testimony served to humanize the tragedy, allowing the jury and spectators to connect on a deeply emotional level with the devastating loss experienced by Traven's family. Despite the powerful impact of Sabrina Fulton's testimony, the outcome of the trial was a source of controversy and debate. George Zimmerman was ultimately acquitted of second-degree murder and manslaughter charges, sparking widespread public discussion about self-defense laws, racial profiling, and the justice system. Dr. Conrad Murray. Dr. Conrad Murray faced charges of involuntary manslaughter in connection with the untimely death of the pop icon, Michael Jackson. The trial saw a riveting cross-examination of Murray by the prosecutor who delved into the circumstances surrounding Jackson's demise. The prosecution contended that Michael Jackson had entrusted his life to Conrad Murray's medical skills, emphasizing that this misplaced trust came at a devastatingly high cost, the loss of Jackson's life. This intense exchange shed light on the controversial events leading up to the passing of the music legend. Ultimately, Conrad Murray was found guilty and sentenced to four years in prison. However, due to California's overcrowded prison conditions, he served only two years of his sentence. Defense attorney Leslie Abramson. Defense attorney Leslie Abramson delivered a heartfelt closing argument, emphasizing the alleged abuse endured by the brothers and their psychological state at the time of the crime. One brother testified, I told him that I didn't want to do this and that it hurt me. He said he didn't mean to hurt me. He loved me. Abramson's emotional plea resonated with the jury, resulting in a hung verdict. However, during a retrial, the Menendez brothers were ultimately found guilty of first-degree murder and are now serving life sentences in prison. Jody Arias During the trial of Jody Arias, who was charged with the brutal murder of her ex-boyfriend Travis Alexander, Viewers witnessed an intense courtroom scene as prosecutor Juan Martinez aggressively questioned Jody about the details of the murder. Martinez confronted Jody with a pointed remark. We were talking about the Cancun issue. Man, you never told the detective about the Cancun issue. He continued to press her, saying, Did you remember what Cancun issue? Do you recall that we're discussing Travis Alexander? Let's start with that. Yes, I remember that. That's why we're here because you killed him, right? Casey Anthony. Casey Anthony, who faced accusations of murdering her two-year-old daughter, Kaylee Anthony, witnessed her defense attorney, Jose Baez, delivering a startling opening statement during her trial. Baez claimed that Kaylee's death was the result of an accidental drowning in the family swimming pool, alleging that Casey's family had helped cover up the incident. According to Baez, Kaylee was never actually missing, as she tragically passed away on June 16, 2008, due to the drowning incident. This unexpected revelation sent shockwaves through the courtroom and set the stage for a highly contentious trial. In the end, Casey Anthony was acquitted of the murder charges, but faced convictions for providing false information to the police. Dexter Johnson in June 2007, Dexter Johnson, a teenager from Houston, was found guilty of the heinous crimes of rape and murder. Upon hearing the sentence, Johnson's family erupted in a frenzy of screams and wails. The weight of the moment proved too overwhelming for them, and one family member even lost consciousness, requiring immediate medical attention. The scene was one of immense anguish and despair as the reality of the situation sank in. In this emotional turmoil, Johnson himself displayed a disturbing reaction. Overwhelmed by rage and frustration, he began to knock over chairs in a fit of defiance. The outburst prompted an immediate response from a team of officers present in the courtroom who swiftly intervened to subdue him. 
Despite his attempts to resist, Johnson was eventually overpowered and brought to the ground. Lance Dyer. In May 2014, Lance Dyer, a 16-year-old, found himself at the center of a high-stakes car chase with law enforcement. Instead of surrendering when confronted by officers, Dyer decided to flee on foot, intensifying the situation. To the shock and alarm of the officers, Dyer brandished a loaded gun and pointed it directly at them, escalating the danger of the encounter. Subsequently, Dyer faced the legal consequences of his actions, and in due course, he was handed a sentence of 11 years. 11-year-old juvenile and would-be gunman. To protect the identity of the 11-year-old perpetrator featured in a video from October 2013, their name has been withheld. However, the concept of withholding emotions is something the child had yet to grasp, as evidenced by their inability to control their emotional outbursts. This became particularly apparent following the sentencing for the grave offence of bringing multiple guns and over 400 rounds of ammunition to school with the intention of targeting and potentially harming several classmates. As the courtroom proceedings unfolded, the emotional turmoil within the young perpetrator became evident. The magnitude of the consequences they were facing seemed to overwhelm them, resulting in a volatile reaction. Michael Marin. Michael Marin, a convicted arsonist, devised a tragic plan to avoid sentencing for his crime committed in 2009. In 2012, following the jury's verdict, Marin reportedly ingested what he claimed to be a suicide pill in an attempt to end his life. During the courtroom proceedings, Marin displayed physical signs of distress. He leaned forward in his chair, triggering a realization among two nearby women that something was seriously amiss. The atmosphere quickly turned tense and alarming as the situation unfolded. Judge Visa's defender fight it out. In June 2014, a heated exchange took place between Florida Judge John Murphy and Assistant Public Defender Andrew Weinstock. What began as a verbal confrontation quickly escalated, resulting in a physical altercation between the two individuals. While the actual fight occurred off-screen, the sounds of the altercation were captured, indicating that Judge Murphy emerged as the apparent victor. According to reports, as soon as the confrontation spilled into the hallway, Weinstock alleged that he was immediately grabbed by the collar and subjected to physical strikes. The altercation seemingly occurred without any prior discussion or warning, catching Weinstock off guard. The swift and forceful nature of the attack left no room for dialogue or resolution. Well, that's all for today's video. If you found this video informative, please consider liking and subscribing to our YouTube channel for more thought-provoking content. Don't forget to leave your comments and suggestions down below. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.